When we get ready to blow fiber optic cable, the questions we need to ask before we show up on the job site with the right equipment and tools and cable pack that we need to do it. We need to know the cable size. And most commonly people refer to cable size as what count of fiber is in it. The information we need is the outside diameter of the cable so that we can choose the proper seal to go over the outside of the cable. The cable count does not give us the outside diameter. The reason we get, once we get this seal decided, which one fits on the cable the best we need, then we can choose which Venturi we get set up that fits the seal for the cable size we need. Now these Venturis and this cable pack, this is what comes in a cable pack. You'll have two Venturis, four sets of seals. Two seals fit in the smaller Venturi, two sets of seals fit in the larger one. This cable pack is 035 to 060. It comes with two Kellum grips. You choose the size you need for your cable. Once you determine which cable pack you need, then you've determined what seals, venturis, cable, Kellum grips you need and everything. The next thing we need to know is the inside diameter of the inner duct. Most of your inner duct is referred to as inch and a quarter, inch and a half, two inch. That refers to the inside diameter of the duct. That allows us to choose the proper inner duct adapter. Now this inner duct adapter is an inch and a quarter. Now what we like to do, if you can see an inch and a quarter inner duct adapter, you can see the size of hole we have on the inside and the, side, the outside diameter of the cable. We get too big of cable in this adapter and we restrict the air that goes into the duct to get our product down line. What we like to do is we've got an inch and a half inner duct adapter that will fit in the inch and a quarter duct and the inch and a half duct. The inch and a half inner duct adapter has a larger inside diameter. So we recommend the larger inner duct adapter for this. Here's also up to a two inch inner duct adapter. You can see the size difference for the bigger pipe. So these are the most important things we need to know. Outside diameter cable, inside diameter of inner duct. That will tell us which cable pack we need. And the other things we need to know on the, have on the job site for this blowing is we have to have the proper size missile for the inner duct so that when we pick out the right missile and bring it along, we've got that with us too. The other thing we need, whenever we're blowing fiber, we have to connect a short piece of inner duct from the trailer of the fiber blowing unit down into the hand hole or cabinet, whichever it may be, so that we can connect the inner duct to the duct in the pedestal so that we can blow our fiber in there. What we have here is a hinged coupler. This hinged coupler comes with various sizes of adapters for the inside. This one, I believe here, is an inch and a half inner, no, this is an inch and a quarter inner duct adapter. I believe this would fit over the outside diameter there. You, once you get this determined, you know your inner duct size, then you make sure that you have your inch and a quarter inner duct couplings in your hinged device, so then you can use this for your connection, there's a seal that goes inside there. So when you connect these together, when we put the air to it, it'll hold it from separating and it'll seal the air into the duct. The coupler inserts are sold separately from the hinged adapter. You can get your inch and a quarter inserts. You can get your ones that fit the two inch, the inch and a half, inch, whatever size your inner duct is. That's why the most important thing we need to know is these dimensions before we come out to the job site or you take this to a job site to blow your fiber. When we're blowing fiber optic cable, we not only need one of these where we start when we go in 
and connect our fiber blower to the first piece of inner duct. But more times than not, we'll end up blowing through another box or another handhole where we'll either splice in a loop that we will want to later take out so we can blow through the next box. So it's important to have several of these on the job site. I, I would recommend having six to eight of these on the job site that we can use to connect boxes together and then take back off and reuse as you go. Make sure you have the proper size for the duct you're getting into. These uh, mechanical couplers is not something you leave in the hole. This is something you use and you take off, you remove your inner duct, you split it, you get it out of there and you keep these and use them over and over and over. This is another air block system. This one here is designed, it's a lot more precise. It allows us to do uh, attach to the inner duct in a different manner. What we run into with the other air block is our inner duct adapters that go inside of the duct the way they do. The issues we run into is the diameter of the cable and the inside diameter here restricts our air. When you get too much more restricted than that, we lose the ability to get the air down line to blow the fiber in. So what we have with this new air block, or this other air block I should say, we have the ability to clamp on to the inner duct on the outside. What we do here is we set this seal system down inside here, top and bottom. Then we have the air clamps that will actually grip the outside of the duct and hold it into place. Now what we have here is the ability, as you can see, we can get it up in here and we got these seals. We can lay that down in there, put our clamp on here, cover up with this, with this other clamp, and that allows us to have the hole inside of the inner duct available for whatever size cable so that we don't restrict the air going inside that duct. The other thing we've got with this clamp here is we can go from inch and a quarter where we're at here, clear up to two inch inner duct, or clear down into your microfibers and use this duct system here. This, this air block system here, if you can see the rubber seals in here and on both sides of the clamp, when you clamp this together and we get this sealed in with the Venturis, we have minimal air leakage here. So we get much more efficient with this block. The expense of this block is considerably more than the other one because the initial investment you have to make on getting your clamps. However, these are all reusable. They're not uh, used and thrown. You just use them over and over and over. So once you've got the investment, you've got a much more efficient air block and a lot more secure. This air block also has the ability to hook our auto luber up here. We have this quick connect on this, just like we do the other air block. So we can add lubricant as we're blowing fiber. This air block takes the same venturis and seal systems as the other one. They're all the same. So once you're set up for one, you're set up for both. The reason we have two of these available, one of these, the other winch line blower we have you can actually adapt that clear up into a six inch diameter duct. This air block here will go from microfiber up to two inch. The other one we can actually get with microfibers and I believe we can go clear up to six inch duct with that adapter and use it in a larger variety of duct diameters. Either one of these blower blocks fit directly in the figure eighting device. One fits in as, as well and easily as the other. One of the most frequently asked questions we have is how far can we blow fiber with our unit? 99% of that is determined by how well the duct was placed. The more 90s and the more loops we try to blow through, the shorter the distance we're going to be able to go.
The experience we've had with the contractors and stuff we've had out there, we've had situations on a plowed in duct where we've blown up to 12,000 feet in a straight shot with a large compressor. We've had other situations where we've gone five to 6,000 feet consistently on a plowed or bored duct. One of the issues that you run into, if you run into a duct that's been laid in a trench and it's laid loose in the trench, it also shortens the distance we can go. So how far can we go is all determined by how well the duct has been placed and how many 90s we have to go through. The speed in which we try to get the cable in the ground, depending on the situation again, a comfortable speed anywhere between 200 to 350 feet a minute is the speed we use to go in. We do a lot of our work with these using a 185 CFM air compressor. The more air we have, the better it works. The larger the compressor, the further the distance we seem to be able to go. When we're blowing, a frequently asked question is what happens when we go out a certain distance and it comes to a stop. What will happen in a lot of cases is where the splices are put together on the duct when they're placed and there's a sharp edge and a lot of the splices when they put them on they actually crimp them so these get brought narrow and they're narrowed down and there's a restriction. What happens a lot of times is we can pull back the cable a little ways and get it moving again and then give it a minute for the air to build up and then let it go and try to ram it through there again. Frequently we back it up and get it going a couple times we can get it past that splice and then we can continue on the blow. That's why it's so important when they place the duct to chamfer the insides of the center duct. One of the other issues we've got the further out we go and it starts slowing down we've had good luck and just slowing way down, maybe even stopping for a little bit with the drive tires and letting the air pressure build up in the inner duct and then start the tires again and it'll get going again. A lot of times we get so far out that the smaller air compressors can't keep enough air in there quick enough. So we've been very successful in letting the air build and go a little further. Another one of the more frequently questions, more frequent questions we have is can you blow another fiber in a duct with an existing fiber? We don't like to, but it's possible. We found that you run into a lot shorter distances that you, you, you try to go. They've got different parachute types. Here's a three parachute, and you can see with the cable in a duct where you can put this one in, and you've got three places where your air can catch this and then you tie your Kellum grip to the eye of this one here. This missile obviously will not fit in an existing fiber. There's another parachute that's available. This one doesn't seem to be as efficient as this one. Very difficult. It works but your distances you're going to go are much shorter. In the situation where you're trying to blow one cable in on top of another cable in an interduct, you're, re you're restricted to having to get what we call a Y adapter, where the existing cable you've got goes through a seal system, and then the cable you're putting in comes in on a Y with another seal system in there. Kind of a complex block, but it's necessary when you're trying to blow one fiber over another. The big advantage to this blowing system and this trailer, we've got a fiber optic handling system, we've got a self-loading trailer, we've got a figure eight machine with several accessories, we've got a fiber blowing system or two here that we can go with this. And the cost of all of this that we have available is comparable to the cost of just a regular fiber optic blowing equipment. Even then, with the other equipment, you still need the cable handling system and you still need the other trailers. We've got it all in one package. With our trailer and with our fiber optic blowing system, you'll notice the only thing we have 
is one air valve and one air pressure gauge. That's all we need to know to be able to blow fiber. The simplicity of our system and our inability to push so hard that we could damage cable where we allow the air to do most of our work cuts down on the chances of accidentally damaging that cable. With the simplicity of this blowing system, the main thing we need to be concerned with is the two tires turning on that cable that we don't accidentally have a burnout. They will not push so hard that we can actually double up the cable in the air block, unlike the Caterpillar drive systems. With the simplicity of our system, we can switch from figure eighting fiber optic cable to blowing fiber optic cable within five minutes.